Oh, hello. This is Tom from anti-proton.com. I have a couple updates for you. Maybe, maybe an important update. I've spent a lot of time researching things, looking into stuff, and I think it's time for me to crank up the uh, accuracy level just a notch. I keep seeing people take Geiger counters and, and test things and infer what could be in them and that sort of thing. Well, I have purchased a, 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 a scintillation counter and a multi-spectrum analyzer, and I can now basically perform gamma spectroscopy. The equipment will be here on Monday, and I will set it up and, well, you know, operate it. What I'll do is I'll take test tubes like this one right here, and little squishy things like this, and I'll put water in them, such as um, rainwater, for example, dirt samples. Um, the tea sample I got right here, remember I boiled down a, uh, a, an entire instant tea bottle. Uh, rocks, dirt, pretty much anything you could ever imagine in your entire life that could possibly have either radioactive contamination or actually be radioactive. And I'm going to stick it in my uh, uh, spectrum analyzer. As gamma rays are emitted, they will be detected by my uh, sodium iodide uh, scintillation uh, counter. It's a big device like this that has a crystal and a photomultiplier and all this stuff. But here's the important part. <clears throat> I think I mentioned before Geiger counters can detect radioactive events, but they can't tell you how much energy is involved. A scintillator can. A scintillator can tell you how much energy was involved. And as a result, I can tell you things like microsieverts per hour, millirankins, whatever you want to know. I can tell you. Basically, I can produce a, an, an XY grid, an XY grid. Remember XY in school where you might have um, uh, uh, speed and you might have time and then, then you get distance, remember that? Or you might have um, uh, the bills, the, the amount of the bill that you paid every month and the time and your bill payments go up and down depending on things. Well, I can now do number of counts, tick, 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 versus energy. 100 kiloelectron volts, 1,000 kiloelectron volts. And, and as I put an object inside the gamma uh, 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 spectrographic device, I will, um, it's gamma spectroscopy, by the way, I'm really terrible at saying it for whatever reason. I'm going to get that wrong a thousand times. I'm always terrible about saying these sorts of things. But uh, as I put the device, uh, uh, objects in the device, like a rock or something, it's going to emit gamma, various little amounts, and, and, and the, the readings are going to appear on the screen, and I'm going to get spikes, potentially. Full energy spikes, bing, bing, bing. And those spikes are going to be like a signature, like a fingerprint, if you like. If you're somebody who actually knows anything about gamma spectroscopy, you're going to be like, well, that's not quite true. There's, you know, Compton scattering and backscatter and the edge and everything. Yeah, there's some of that stuff. But basically put, every single isotope puts off, though every single isotope that, that emits gamma will put off different specific discrete energies. And gamma energies for the most part, are discrete and specific every single time. So I will be able to read them and know what's in it. For once, when I have a sample of water, I can tell you my rainwater contains this, 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 and this. And I can be accurate about it. And I can show it to you. No longer do we guess what elements could be in the water or the rain, which is water, or, or the food, or, or the ground, or whatever. I can just test. I'll tell you exactly what the hell is in it. Every single element that's in it that's radioactive has to be radioactive. Um, there are a few elements that don't put off any gamma. Keeping in mind, though, a lot of elements put off gamma secondarily. Like, for example, strontium-90 doesn't put off a gamma. But it, it uh, emits a beta particle, which I will not be able to detect, and it turns into yttrium-90. Well, yttrium-90 is very excitable, and it needs to rest and calm down. And part of doing that is to drop to a lower energy state and pop a gamma. I can detect the gamma, I think, from that one. I'm not sure if that... that, that that'll be a tough one to, to detect. But I can detect most gammas. In fact, you'll find that most atoms that emit an, an alpha or a beta or whatever, even if they don't emit an alpha, a gamma, technically, 
they will shake around for a while because they're, the atom is left in a really energetic state and then they'll calm down and release a gamma regardless. So most beta and alpha emitters, the, the, the supposedly pure ones, actually still put off gamma. Like my polonium-210 is an alpha emitter, but it puts off a gamma still. So does this potassium chloride salt. And I will be able to detect that. And I will be able to tell you what's in it. It was... It was expensive. It, it hurt. My wallet, like, after I bought it, I had to take my wallet and put it in, my, in the freezer for, like, a couple of hours so the wallet would cool down because it was, like, really hot from buying it. Anyway, it's uh, from Spectrum Techniques, and it is a UCS-30 advanced spectrometer system. It comes with a, uh, um, uh, 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 what is it, a 38 millimeter scintillation counter. Was it 38? Hold on a second. 38 millimeters. Let's see what that comes out to. I can't remember. 38 millimeters. I'm prepared again, right? Two inches. 1.4960. Okay. That is a one and a half inch scintillation crystal made of uh, sodium iodide. It's probably thallium doped, most likely. But anyway, um, there's a pho photomultiplier tube behind it. It runs all the way up to 800, um, 800 volts, I believe. Well, I'll have to double check it. I am not an expert of scint uh, 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 scintillation, but I will be. But not really, I'm not going to be an expert, but I will be very knowledgeable of it. <clears throat> Ironically, I wonder if I'll be able to, to, to not have to take some of my required labs in college over this, because you see, technically speaking, I'll be using the same equipment that the universities use. Well, for the students. I wonder if I'll be able to get out of it. Anyway, it has a multi-spectrum analyzer that can do all kinds of stuff. It can do decay studies. It can tell me all the various things that are inside. It even has a little isotope match thing that tells me like what isotopes are in it. It even auto-calibrates for energies under uh, 1.024 million electron volts. So I'll let you guys know on Monday when I get it and set it up. It should be hella awesome. And I invite all of you to take a peek and see. Uh... I'm trying to think of any else counts. Right now, I'm not accepting samples. Yes, for a couple reasons. The reason A, I don't want to give you all my address. Come on now, really. I got all these like people sending me crazy emails and stuff that you know hate my guts. Not all of you that that email me hate me, by the way, but some of you hate my guts. It's true. Apparently, people don't like being told the truth. But then again, I really shouldn't say that. I always hate when people call stuff the truth because that's usually a lie. But regardless, though. My, my, my goal is to try to show you as much stuff and as high quality as I can. When I do my next rain sample, when there's actually rain coming down, I hope to take the camera, take the, the uh, like a test tube or whatnot, or my, my Florence flask or something, go outside with it, show you that it's clean with a Geiger counter, there's no ticks on it or anything. I'll take it outside with the camera, all the same frame thing, you know, not the same frame, but the same set of video, never pausing it or anything. And I'll run it through the water and dump it. Run it through the water and dump it. Like a couple of times that you see there's nothing in it. It's just the water. And then I'll take the water back and put it under the scintillation detector. Run it for like 20 or 30 minutes and show you what's, what comes out. All in the same video without covering it or pausing it or anything like that. Of course, people can still call foul if they want to. That's fine. I mean, how could you possibly ever convince everybody? But you gotta admit, it would be hard to fake it. Not impossible, nothing's impossible, but hard. Because with the scintillation detector right beside the computer, you'll be, able to be, you'll be able to see the changes as I move the water in. I mean, it'd be sort of apparent. But anyhow, uh, yeah. So this is Tom from AntiAshProton.com, and yes, I do hope to, to have some Japanese uh, soil samples very soon to test as well. Thanks to, well, Thanks to some very, very, very nice people. Well, more specifically, thanks to one's very specifically nice person. I shouldn't say people. Person. You know who you are. But don't say anything. Because I don't want anybody to hear and freak out or anything. So, this has been Tom, who's incredibly happy and also incredibly bankrupt, from anti-proton.com. Oh my god, it was like, it was like four or five thousand bucks. Oh my god, it was expensive. My, my credit card melted in my hand. But if you want quality equipment, real quality equipment, you gotta pay the quality prices. Anyway, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, ooh, come to my website.
There's updates. Bye-bye.